So you wanna learn how to add MCP servers to Kiro? Let me show you. All right, within Kiro, you have a couple different options in order to get MCP server set up. First of all, we're gonna try bringing up the command palette, which is Control Shift P or Command Shift P if you're on Mac OS. You're gonna search for MCP. And what that'll do is it'll bring you to the mcp.json configuration file. Now, one thing to note is in the bottom right-hand corner, you may get this notification indicating the MCP is currently disabled. To start using that, you need to enable it. So we open up the settings. And what's interesting here is that at the user level, I do indeed have it enabled, but but the workspace level, it is disabled. So I need to go and enable that, save it, we're good to go. So now that we're here, we have the config. And again, keep in mind that there is a user config for MCP JSON and a workspace config for MCP JSON. This allows you to have tight control over what MCP servers are enabled for each individual project versus at a more global user level. Now I mentioned there's a couple different ways you can add MCP servers. One of the other ways you can add them is via the Kiro icon over on the activity bar here on the left-hand side for me. You click on that and down here you would see the option to enable MCP servers again as well if you wanted to go that way to enable them. Once here, you would click on the little edit icon to open the MCP config. And that again is yet another way you can get to the MCP configuration for both the workspace and the user configuration. All right, so let's set up our first MCP server. One, there's one that came with Kiro, at least at the time of this recording, that's called fetch, and that's disabled by default. So we can set that to false so that it is enabled now, or we could have, once it's done connecting here, from the Kiro view under the MCP server section, you can right click disable, disable, or enable all tools. Specifically, what this is gonna do is it's gonna fetch a URL from the internet and optionally extracts its contents as markdown if we wanted to do that. So that's fair, but let's add one that requires a little bit more setup, that's a little bit more feature rich than just fetching URLs. Let's use Brave Search. So for this, I'm gonna do it as a workspace config. I'm gonna give it the name of the MCP server that I want, and we're gonna call it Web Search here. We're gonna use the command npx and we're gonna pass in some arguments. We're gonna tell it to use the Brave Search MCP server package from NPM and the transport protocol we're gonna use is standard input output stdio. And then you're gonna enter in the environment variable Brave API key and put in your API key. How do you get a Brave? How do you get a Brave Search API key? You need to head to brave.com slash search slash API and sign up for a new account there. Once you're signed up, you have to choose a subscription that like you see here under the pricing mechanism. There's free, base, and pro. You can go with free, you get one query per second or up to 2000 queries per month. The one caveat to that is you have to enter in a credit card even for the free tier, unfortunately. But once you do that, you're all set and you won't get charged for anything. You can start using the free level of the Brave Search API. Then once you have an account and you're signed into that account, you're gonna head on over from your dashboard. You're gonna click on API keys. In this page, you'll see nothing so far, but you can click on add API key, give it a name and make sure you choose the free subscription, click add, and then you'll see that show up here. You're gonna copy this value and save it for later to put into the MCP configuration in Kiro. And just to make sure it's fully clear, you're gonna put it in here in place of this your API key text. You're gonna paste your API key from the Brave Search API dashboard into this value here and save it. Once you save that and have an API key stored in the environment variable, you'll see this pop up, this web search MCP server. It'll spin for a few seconds to connect to the Brave Search API under your account and enable all the tools associated with that MCP server. Again, if we wanted to, we could disable the whole entire MCP server, disable all the tools, or just enable all tools from right-clicking on it. Or each individual we can click on, if you click on this, this is something I learned the hard way. If you click on any individual tool, it will automatically toggle enabling and disabling that particular tool on you. So now let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna come on over to the Kiro chat view. I'm gonna choose Vibe for now, we don't need a spec. I'm gonna make sure autopilot is turned off here because I just wanna chat with Kiro for now. And so I'm gonna ask it, tell me about the array.reduce function from MDN documentation. Maybe I wanna learn more about that without having to search it up myself and find the right resources. Then it's gonna prompt me to call that MCP tool Brave Web Search. So I'm gonna allow it to do that. It wants to go fetch. It wants to make another fetch call. And now we can see based on the MDN documentation, 
here's what you need to know about array.reduce. And it gives me all the information directly in the context of my development tool, rather than me having to switch context to another browser and search for these details, find the right search results that are relevant to what I'm looking for. I can learn more about this type of JavaScript reduce function on my arrays that I might be using and how to correctly use it in my code. All right, so that completes setting up the Brave Search API MCP server in Kiro. Let's add another MCP server, in this case, one that will help us determine the security of our code and our open source dependencies, and that is the Sneak MCP server. To do this, we're gonna open up the MCP config file in Kiro and, oh no, look here, my API key. You can see it, go ahead and try it out. See if it works. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. So what we need to do now is just like any other JSON file, we're gonna follow the proper JSON syntax. We're gonna add another property in here. We're gonna call this one sneak, and then we're gonna start setting up the configuration for this. Very similar to the web search one, we're gonna say the command for this is going to be npx, and then we're gonna pass in some arguments to that, or brackets. All right, so we're gonna use hyphen y to say yes to any prompts that are going on there. We're gonna say sneak at latest package. Then we're gonna tell the sneak command to use the MCP server from sneak. And we're gonna tell it what protocol to use, which is hyphen t, short for that. And we're gonna use the standard input output again, stdio. And that should set everything up nicely for us. And then we don't have any environment variables that we need to use for this one in particular. But as you can see, as soon as I save that, this started spinning and it's starting to connect to that sneak MCP server. So give it a few seconds here and it'll be ready and enabled for us. And there we go. Now we can see that that has 12 tools set up for it. Sneak AI bomb, sneak auth, and all of these other tools associated with the sneak MCP server. So now let's go ahead and use it. I have a project opened up from a past video, which you can check out the link in the description below, where we generated a note-taking application using Kiro's spec-driven development. So let's use the Sneak MCP server to evaluate the security of this project. So we have a new session here with Kiro, choosing the Vive option and autopilot off again. And I'm gonna ask it, please tell me about any security issues in my open source dependencies for this project. So we should see Kiro's gonna start thinking and it wants to leverage sneak here. We saw Kiro was thinking there. It wants to scan my project security vulnerabilities in my open source dependencies using sneak. So it's nice that it recognized that. Let me first get the absolute path of your project and then run a security scan with it. So you got the absolute path and now it wants to call the MCP tool, the SCA scan. All right, so that failed because I'm running on Windows and it sent in a path that's based on Unix, I think. So we're going to let it get the location this way. We finally got to a point where it's going to set up a proper path string for sneak ska here on windows that is now we need to trust that folder so we're going to run sneak trust for that folder we're going to let that run which prompted me on another monitor here in another browser that i'm signed into with my sneak account i'm going to say trust path on that click ok now it wants to run the security scan and it passed <laughs> Great news, your project has no known security vulnerabilities in its open source dependency. Sneak scan completed successfully and found zero issues. That's awesome to see. So great news, it finished doing this sneak SCA scan and found that there are zero security issues in my open source dependencies. So that's fantastic to see. And now I wanna ask it about the code. Like, are there any security issues in the code? So let's run a scan of that as well. So in this case, it's recognizing that it needs to do a different security scan, in, in this case, a sneak code scan. So I'm gonna let it be trusted to do that. All right, and rather quickly, it came back with the results of that scan. And unfortunately, we have some security issues that we need to look into. We have a critical issue, hard-coded non-cryptographic secret, two issues of that, a medium severity issues. We have nine of those, information exposure, cross-site request forgery problems, and allocation of resources without limits. In addition to that, we have insecure JWT verification two issues and a couple of, well, not a couple, a bunch of low severity issues here. Damn! But one thing to note here is that the good news is most issues are in test files, which is expected. And in those situations, we can actually tell Sneak to ignore test files. By default, Sneak doesn't know that it can ignore those test files necessarily, so it assumes it is code that could be run in production and therefore alerts us to that at least on our first initial scan of this project like this. There we have it. We have details on our security of our open source dependencies and the code that was written in this project. We can use Kuro's AI capabilities to address those security issues even further if we'd like.
That's how you get set up adding MCP servers in Kiro. Now that was just two MCP servers that we demonstrated here, but I'm curious what MCP servers are you finding to be most useful for you and your projects? Let me know in the comments below. On that note, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.